Well, welcome out there once again to uh, my program. Always a pleasure to be here. And always happy to have you out there in the audience watching. This is the uh, panel show, and the panel show is always interesting. Believe me. <coughs> my panelists uh, are out there scurrying around and uh, looking uh, under every crevice and crack and rock, etc., to find out what is going on in the city of Fall River. Now, sometimes they come back with uh, news that uh, is not that good. And we wonder why. Why is it that Fall River doesn't seem to actually be moving along? We hear a lot of talk about uh, the future. Well, we've been hearing about the future for 30 or 40 years. And a lot of us are wondering, is there a future? And why isn't here by now? So we're going to get into the uh, some of the stories that have uh, come, in, come about. And so I want to welcome my, uh, my three panelists, Dan, Bob, and uh, CJ. So what's happened uh, to the Olympics? That's all we could hear about for about a year. Oh, I mean, Well, they uh, couldn't make enough money from it. They, 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 the, taxpayers were, the taxpayers revolted. Oh. They, they refused to, to fund another Subsidized. big dig. Mm -hmm. And if you read Howie Carr, a few articles that Howie Carr wrote about it, uh, all the big contractors and the big political players who were going to make millions mm -hmm. from the Olympics are very upset. But, you know, the Olympics was never for the people of, of the state of Massachusetts or for this area. The Olympics were about money for the, for the, big, for the contractors, for the political players, and, and for all the people that have been making money and gouging the people of this state for decades. Well, and you know what's very interesting is that uh, Mass Inc., which is a nonprofit, um, and it's actually Mass Inc. polling, they're a nonprofit media organization, very liberal, uh, up in Boston. Uh, they tout the uh, messages from the legislature and the House. Uh, sometimes they tend to be pretty independent. Most of the time, they're, they're not. They actually did a poll, and they came up with the reason why Massachusetts could not support the Olympics was because of the snow in February. The snow in February? The snow in February is what caused... Is this <laughs> going to be winter Olympics or a summer Olympics? <laughs> they were going to be uh, having boats in the water? Yeah. The, the, people, the people of Massachusetts felt that the government could not handle snow removal. And how could they handle it? So how could they handle an Olympics? And I think, you know, it's kind of right, blame it on the snow, but the people are right. You can't handle snow removal. How are you going to handle the Olympics? So you can't handle a million dollar bond for was, trash bins. There was some, uh, some information coming out uh, a while back about uh, boat races on a Watapa. Do I have that correct? Oh, yeah. The, yeah that, was, that was up there with, with Fall Rivers getting better. That was that, <laughs> on a delusionary scale. That was right off the charts. Yeah, we're going to have boat races in, in the Watapa. Rowing. Yeah. Rowing. Rowing. Or, or they're going to look for the Loch Ness Monster or something. Yeah. Like, I don't know what, so which one it was. What happened to the, uh, the rowing? Uh, on a white tupper, Dan. At, uh, what happened to the rowing? <laughs> we went the same place as the casino. Yeah. The casino. And, yeah. yeah, and, and many mm. other things. But look, the fact is, look, the people didn't want to be on the hook for the money, uh, and, and they realized that they just couldn't do this, and, and, and there are a lot of upset people, mostly rich contractors and political people who were very upset that we're not getting the Olympics because this was going to be another great building boom. Yeah, like the big dig. Right. I mean, you know, the want for years. arguably the worst public project ever undertaken on the planet Earth. And when Mayor Walsh turned around and said to the U.S. Olympic Committee, I will not sign an agreement until I read it. I, can you believe it? A mayor wants to read the agreement. And what how, how can you do that? And the Olympic Committee was what? Upset? They said you'll get the agreement. In, yeah, you'll get the agreement in September. <laughs> you got to agree to it now. And he said, "I'm not going to do that because that agreement would have put him on the hook for any of the cost overruns." So and that, the legislature, although many legislatures already said they're not in support of tax dollars being used for it, well, they had know, enough. I mean, you, you in know, their pocket to overturn that decision. I mean that. Uh, and people are getting tired of uh, public money going into private uh, right. pockets. Yeah. And, and if you read Carr's article, he basically said that even if the people said no, the, the legislature was prepared to override the people, the will of the people. Exactly. That's how much power and how much money was out there for these people. But, you know, just things went wrong because there was too much pressure. So even if you don't want it, that's we know right, it's good for it. you. But that's I what they do like, now. Yeah, that's what they do now. I mean, look at the, look at the income tax uh, 
the reduction in the income tax. You they know, forget about it. Yeah, they, they, and, and now there's even public pressure about that. Uh, and now they, they're giving us pressure about why they can't give us a sales tax holiday because they need the money. Well, because they're a giant vacuum cleaner. All they do is suck the money up. The more money we give them, the more money they use. It's kind of like the city council in Fall River. Right. So we got the mayor's race. Um, now, here we are in July. Dan, you, you got something nope. to say right away. I'm wanting you finish. No, go ahead. The mayor's race is a two-person race between Mayor Sutter and Jaisal Correa, and that, that's the bottom line. On West Wolf Flanagan pulls out papers at the 11th hour, in which case it would turn into a historic, epic mayor's race, the likes of which Fall River has never seen. The battle between Flanagan and uh, Sutter? And uh, or it might be a, a, battle a battle between, between the three candidates. Right, it in the would, primary. It, it would be an epic primary, and I think voter turnout would skyrocket. So, what's the, uh, the word on uh, Flanagan? I mean, you brought his name up. Do you think he's really interested? I thought for a while he, he was uh, interested, but uh, the deadline is looming Friday as of 5 p.m. And how many signatures do you need? 50. 50. That's not much? Nope. Not, no. So, Charter commissioners need more. You actually need double to exactly. run for Charter Commission. <laughs> so the mayor's race, uh, you, you think that... Uh, as of right now, it's a two-person race between yeah, Sam Sutter and Jaisal Correa. There are other candidates in the race, uh, <laughs> CJ. Token candidates. <laughs> yeah, you have Chris Bianchi, which I don't even know if he's even got his signatures turned in. Um, then you have Robert Alexander. Um, and, you, of course, you have Richard Renzi, who has turned in his signature and has signed the paperwork to be on the ballot. Um, we have decided, uh, and we're setting it up now, that the people's debate, which will be our second people's debate, will happen this year in September. And, and where's that going to be held? Uh, we're working on that now, but it will probably be held either at the Morton or at the Cuss Middle School. When you say people's debate. That's where the questions come from the people. From the people. And the moderators uh, are... You're going to let the people in on this? Oh. We're going to allow the people. You know the, you know the people who never get to speak or who when they speak they're ignored. Well, they're not going to be ignored. Hey, your three minutes that, is up. That, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Three minutes are up and that, that's the end of it. And Selective three minutes yep. for citizen input. Right. And, this, it, but it, and it will be after the tennis clinic. When is the uh -huh. tennis clinic? This weekend. August 1st and oh. 2nd. Okay, so in other words, you're already uh, putting together the uh, people's debate. Yeah, yes, we, we are. We're going to wait until after the primary. Obviously, we're not going to. No, we're doing a, a mayoral debate. Oh, a mayoral. Yes, we're not going to do a, a council debate. No, we there's may not no do way. A council debate at all. And that will be, will that be before many. the primary. That will be before the primary. The uh, mayor's debate. The mayor's debate. And then, of course, you'll do one, one or maybe more after. After the yeah. debate. The, uh, yeah. After the, the primary. Preliminary. Because again, we can't do it for the city council. Uh, there's too just many. too many candidates. I mean, we're up to 30, what, 5, 36? Yeah, there, there are going to be 18 candidates in right. the final. There's absolutely no way, you know, you can do that because if you give everybody uh, a three-minute opening, you know, you're already an hour and a half into the debate. Show, yeah. <laughs> People are going to have to have, you know, they're going to have to pitch a tent for the right. debate. So and and FRC Media is sending out letters in the next uh, couple, of, couple of weeks uh, to set up times for political candidates whether for mayor, city council, or school committee, to come in and take their five-minute announcement that why they're running for office and asking for their vote. Yeah, that's um, and that's gonna, and they do that every year, as we yeah. know. Yeah. So um, here we have we get the mayor's race, uh, city uh, council, thirty-five candidates. That that's uh, almost uh, historic proportions. Uh, thirty-five candidates, but you can narrow that to about nine, in my opinion, that yeah. have, that have a legitimate shot of actually breaking in and I think most of the change on the city council will come as a result of an incumbent not seeking re-election not at the ballot box which is disappointing right so right now um, Jesu Correa running for mayor he's out he's out uh, and who else? Mike Myo's seat, Mike seat is open. Mike seat is open. Right. And, and, and theoretically, course, Steve Wong. Right. And of course, technically, Steve Wong. Why do you say that? Because well, because he, he wasn't he wasn't elected. Yeah. Oh, well. he, he came as Paul the Silver's uh, the resignation. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so, so technically, I mean, he he's been there for a month or two, but right. realistically, he's not perceived. Although. Based on his performance in the last election, you say he has, a, he has a little bit of name recognition, so he has to be looked upon as somebody He'll who's... He'll be listed as an incumbent? No. 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 
right. I, but I do think he's he'll going hold to be that in the second seat. List. I, I believe he'll hold that seat for, for one reason and one reason only. He did something that every other city councilor did not do. He actually read the reports. And he said he read the reports. And then the city council president came out and said, we don't have time to read the reports. None of us read the reports. <laughs> you think so the, do you think this the average, the voter, you think the average voter, out, voter out there will know that? Well, let, let's just hope that the average voter is, 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 is upset enough with what's going on in the community again, as they did in the recall, to get out there. And actually, and, and I, I tend to agree with Danny about his assessment that some of these incumbents will have enough traction yes. to stay in enough of a enough of a, a, a vote of constituent base that because the votes are going to be separated by so many people that they're going to slide in again. I hope not, because I I hope that the public will consciously say that you know this city is on the verge of of destruction receivership and these people have are continuing down the same road over and over again i mean this last budget was a catastrophe and and you look at this thing and you say how could you put the the especially the six people who voted for the budget back in their chairs well, without doing well, you, irreparable you, you damage the, to the uh, city the great number of uh, city council candidates could and we'll split the boat, and that could be a, a problem for the incumbents. Well, I, I, as yeah, I exactly. said, I think there's about, not, and I've gone through the entire list. I don't have it in front of me. But I've narrowed it down to about nine people that have any legitimate chance of being elected. Are you, are you talking about the challengers? Yeah. And, okay, just the not the incumbents. Correct. Uh, give, us, give us an uh, example of a few. <clears throat> Cliff Ponte. Jason Caminetti, Josh Font, Rich Cavaceres, Trot okay. Joseph Lee, to name a few. All right. I, so. I think the most vulnerable incumbent that's sitting right now has to be Danny Rigo, if you look at his performance in the last two elections. You, that, yeah, I, I tend to agree with you there. Next would have to be Pat Casey. When you yeah. say performance, you mean the number of uh, votes? B based on his electoral performance in the last two election cycles, he has to be the most vulnerable sitting councilor right now. All right, so because the people of Fall River don't really pay attention to the votes. They don't pay attention to the action. And th this has been our big problem, okay? And, and when you look at these historically their election results you see who very few of them shift their, their positions are usually pretty locked well Dan, yeah. Dan, Danny Rigo uh, had a major shift in the last two cycles the likes of which I don't remember in many years right okay he started out he started out going uh, in, in his first primary he was ninth Right. Then he went to second. The last election, he finished ninth. Mm -hmm. Now, you can't go down any further. No, you can't. But what I'm saying is normally, and you can disagree with me on this, but normally the majority of our elections have all been pretty solid where, where people come out in their election results. They don't shift too much. One or two positions, but they're usually pretty locked into where they are. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Let's, let's I, I agree. If you, if, if you look historically, Joe Camara, over 20 years, has, has finished solidly in fifth place right. many, many, many times. Right. Okay, so uh, we've got the, uh, the race is underway, and uh, I notice the signs are going up, so uh, I guess they're, you know, beyond that uh, period where you can't put signs up. For the yeah. first time in 20 years or so, Richard, I think there's actually going to be a legitimate school committee race. Yeah. Where, well, where which, how many, how many uh, uh, listed now? Well, I'm not sure of the number, but <clears throat> uh, all the incumbents have taken out their papers, and there are two, in my opinion, two very bona fide Challenges and who, that, who, who are they? Who, who are the that two? would be Paul Coogan and Edward Costa. Paul Coogan, uh, yep. absolutely. Uh, yeah, of the uh, of the of, of the, the Coogan in, of the infamous Coogans, uh, <laughs> who basically uh, I think they never met a city about, dime they don't about like. twenty five percent of the school department. Right. I guess, but they, but, but uh, he is he is a, a very well known. He was vice principal of Durfee, very well known by the kids, very well known by the parents of the children, and of course uh, Edward Costa, who is 
uh, you know, very well known, uh, uh, vet, and knows the knows the school system intimately. He was assistant superintendent. He would definitely be an asset. <clears throat> and he would, you know, he he is a he is an extremely. Uh, you know, a, a extremely well thought of uh, person for the most part. So these two both are very, very viable candidates. Uh, and, and the key is this is going to be a referendum on the voters of Fall River because you, if you take Danny Rigo, Danny Rigo to me will be the litmus test. If Danny Rigo gets in again or finishes higher than he did in the last election, it shows that everybody is not paying attention. Right. He, he because has, he because has to finish higher or he's out. He, 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 he well, that's what line. I'm saying. Yep. He finished ninth the last time and he voted against the budget. This time he voted for a budget that was worse, made up an excuse that he didn't vote for it because initially the previous year because it wasn't transparent, which was a lie. He said he voted for it because of the bags. He, he wasn't in favor of the trash. And, and he was against pay as you throw. And now he's running for re-election. So if the public was paying attention, the three people who, who flipped, or as I like to refer oh, to them I, as, I, Sam sellouts, <laughs> um, the, those three people should, should, be, should be evicted from those seats. And because no, no straight of who? That, that would be Ray Mitchell. That, that would be Ray Ray Mitchell, Ferrara, Ray Mitchell, Ray Mitchell and, and, Danny and Danny Rigo. Danny Rigo. So they should be evicted from their position and because their votes were not in the best interest of the people of Fall River. And as a matter of fact, Linda Pereira said sitting in her council seat that she wasn't going to vote for half of the things because she wasn't going to pay for it. She was voting in her own self-interest. And that's what a lot of these city councilors no. do. They vote in their own self-interest. And Linda has historically come in very high on, on, on her results, in her election results. So I think Linda's going to be a tough nut to crack on getting her out of that seat. I, I think Linda will be reelected. Yep. Uh, if, if you look at if you look at Danny Rigo over the course of the budget debate, he actually, without realizing it, he actually, I believe, put the bag fee on the table. What I th where I think he went wrong and probably regrets is this. I think he was thinking when he brought this out in public debate that that would eliminate the bags. Now we've got the two. Right. But it was Danny Rigo that said, one way or the other, you're going to pay for trash, mm -hmm. okay. and actually suggested a residential flat fee. All right, let's get, let's get to... Uh, we already pay for trash, by the way. Yeah, let's we get do. To now a, five well, taxes. Let's, let's get to an old issue that um, doesn't seem to be uh, going away at all. And that's the uh, pension system in the city of Fall River. <laughs> uh, we turn doing, that over to the expert. <laughs> how, you doing, how you doing, brother? <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, it's been said that uh, the city is uh, literally several hundred million dollars behind the eight ball when it comes to pensions. Is yeah, that I correct? Will be, I will be going before the council this, this uh, next meeting, and I will be telling them that I'm going to be filing a complaint. The city, again, in this budget, and... The, the, the three sellouts voted for a budget that had the funding for the pension system in it, and we were told at the last retirement board meeting that the city will not pay on time. Again, they have either underfunded or paid, paid late, and I have, the, I have all the records now, and they're going to be going to the attorney general. And, you know, and Where they did you get the records? From, from the retirement board. He's on the board. I'm on the board. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, am an elect, I, am, uh, I was elected by the, by the employees. I am an employee uh, so representative. I was elected, and I am going to do my job. And we, we were told by Mr. Noons at the last meeting that they will not pay us in October as, as uh, they had promised. And we what, do, may, what do you mean? What do you mean? Uh, what do you mean by pay? In other words, the city's portion of the retirement. They have to. They have to put in. Uh, you know, they have to give us money, which which will be invested. And preliminary figures have already said that's going to that's going to add an additional half a million dollars to the to the debt. Now it may be more. So when we at the meeting, and you can watch it on you can watch it on tape. It's taped. I I abstained from the vote. I I amended the motion. And I wanted an impact study from PRIM, which is the investment board uh, of the state. I want an impact study of the delay in payments. I also have a list of all the other years where they delayed or paid okay, well so under what their responsibilities were. So let me put it this way. It's a very complicated issue with a lot of very large numbers. 
But the bottom line is we're in this situation because the city pilfered the retirement system. They didn't pay on time or they didn't pay they paid less than they should have paid and they they used money that was that was a contract that they entered into with people while they were active employees to fund their retirement system and they have not done that not for one year mm -hmm. not for two years but for a decade so you're going to file a complaint with who anybody i can <laughs> and I'm going to start with the Attorney General and the Department of Revenue. I'm going to also so ask you have a, you have a, a yeah. A I'm going to I, well. I need the impact study. I have the figures. I'm going to file a complaint, and, and I'm also going to file a complaint against the Treasurer on health care because he put in $146,000 into an employee and you, account. And your complaint is going to ask for a, what? a forensic audit. And also, I'm going to ask that the the state require the city to pay on time. And Mr. Noons made it very clear at the meeting, off camera, because he said, I'm not going to say this on camera, but I will. He said, what do you expect us to do? Pay you on time. If we do that, we can't pay, pay the, the, the employees in the city. So my question to him is, if we had a balanced budget, why can't we do both? In my house, and my, if my b budget is balanced, and my gas bill and my electric bill come in, I can pay the both of them. I can't, I don't, I don't say if my, if I have enough money, I have enough money. So somebody was lying. So the forensic audit, uh, are you asking the attorney general to step in? I'm going to ask them. I'm going to ask them. I think, I, think that, I think that the facts, especially in the health care, uh, deserve a forensic audit again, which we did in 91. We need another forensic Suppose audit. Suppose they ignore you. Well, they may ignore me, but the people of the Why? city will, not, will, will know, what, you know where the blame is. I am not going to lie. the mayor of this city to blame the pension system for for the problem. Where's the, that city, the city council? Created. Where's the city council on issue on this issue? Worrying about the seats. This is worried about their seats. It's an election year. No, nobody wants to touch it. The, they won't. They won't. I, I will tell you. I will go there in August. I will say something, and nobody will make a comment. I'll get up. I'll, I'll get out of the well, and I'll walk out, and nobody wa nobody will want to say a word, because they don't want to touch it until after the election. So and after the election, where is this heading the city? I mean, it seems like this We're is going to the receivership. Up. Okay. It's it's simple. It, I, uh, we've said that on, on how many times on this show, Richard? Have we said we are on you know we are on the Titanic here, you know, and and the band is playing, and we're sinking. <laughs> and Sam Sutter is Nero. Well, <laughs> what I've heard people, politicians say that Fall River has a great future. Yeah. yeah. We do. Yeah, in, in, in <laughs> what, what alternate mean? universe are they living in? That's what I want to know, because I mean, look around. I mean, you, you give one, uh, you know, dire uh, example of uh, how the city is being managed, et cetera. And then on the other hand, we have people who are running for office and saying, well, Forum has a great future. What do you make of this, Dan? Well, the problem is, Moten, with all the respect to the candidates and anybody that puts their name on the ballot is worthy of a certain degree of respect for, for taking the time to get involved in the political process. But the, the, in all seriousness, the bottom line is most of the political candidates, even the ones that I think have a shot to be elected, most of them do not have a political perspective of what's gone on in the last 20 years in this city to know some of the stuff that w we've been talking about for years. And we've well, heard this. We've heard, I mean, Richard Cabaceres turned around and says, all I hear is you people picking up problems. Give me some solutions. You know what? It's not the job of the people to give you the solution. But to solve a problem, you have to first identify it. Then you have to put together your inventory of tools to solve it. Then you create your plan of correction. If you don't go through that three-step process, you never get to the end. And that's what happens at Fall River. Yeah, but I disagree. We gave them the solution. Get rid of these people. Like <laughs> well, him. We, we have Everything's done that. fine. Right. Everything's fine because it's not. I will give you a quick example. These things I'm making, I'm not fabricating. I have a letter from Mr. Noons to the Health Care Advisory Board oh, stating, that letter, yes. stating that he erroneously put employee money in an employer account. In so May. that means in May, just before the budget. Right. So that means the budget was askew. And by law, he's required to put it into a trust account. How anybody could do that is beyond me because they know, it's, it's, they, know it's, they know it's employee money. So that's number one. Number two, as far as the retirement so that, system, that money has to go into a trust yeah, account. Yeah, so by, I mean, 
32B, statutorily, has to be a, He violated the statute, which is malfeasance as far as I'm concerned. But now we go to the retirement system. I have a printout of, a, of, of 10 years, and I'm going to get it go, to go back more, to show you, I'm going to give you a ballpark, and I don't have it in front of me, but some of the years. Now, New Bedford was used to see what their contribution was, because New Bedford's kind of like the same size, fundamentally the same. Now, maybe it would, would, wouldn't be exact. Ours might have been, our requirement might have been slightly lower or slightly higher, but this is the way the years ran. New Bedford's contribution, 28 million. Fall River, 9 million. New Bedford's contribution, 27 million. Fall Rivers, 6, 9 million, 6 million. We were 10, 15 million dollars less than a city that fundamentally is pretty close to ours. And no, then we who, wonder who, who why the retirement system is a mess. But who, who oversees these accounts? And else to say that, city because you know, they're self-insured. There's not enough money in this account. Well, I, mean, I, why, I, blame, why? I blame everybody who has fiduciary responsibility. And now, when I was elected like to the that treasurer, position, and, and, and when I was elected to the board, I assume that fiduciary responsibility, and it will not go unaddressed by me. If anybody wants to say that they weren't aware of it when I'm on the board, they're going to be liars, because I am going to, every year, I am going to tell them exactly what the impact was, exactly how much they should have paid, exactly when they, they should have paid it, and if they don't, I will, um, I will hold them accountable. Do you think the board was negligent? Uh, well, I, I think that the board, the board took an action that they, you know, that they felt was right. I don't agree with that action. I don't, I can't play, you know, I, I can't, uh, you know, hindsight's always twenty twenty. but I can tell you one thing, there's absolutely no way I would have approved the, the board, but you got to remember, you got to remember who was on the board for a while and, 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 and whose camp they're on. And you've got to remember the composition of the board. The composition of the board has city people and, and employee people, and ultimately the city can kind of override it, just like the, the you know, the, the, so the board's composition is not made so the board can you just unilaterally act in the benefit of the So employees. what's the recourse uh, to a board member? I mean, well, I don't know. I'm, but I know my recourse is to file a complaint, and that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Well, gentlemen, we're, we're pretty uh, close to the end of the program. Uh, any uh, final comments? Any prediction, uh, CJ? I at this point I have no prediction. No whatsoever. prediction. I just think Fall River is heading right in the right direction, straight to the. I, house. I have Bob, I have a mean? statement. I want to make Danny wrong. Elect all nine <laughs> new <laughs> members to the city council. That's I a, don't want to see any of them. All right. Do you, you have a prediction, Dan, for the future? Prediction. Jay's will career the next mayor, and there'll be two new school committee people. Okay, there it is. You've got it. Uh, no comment on the city council. Ladies and gentlemen out there, I want to thank you for, uh, wa for watching the program, and uh, gentlemen for being on, CJ, Bob, and Dan. So, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you get a lot of good information. I did, and uh, the uh, pension uh, situation is something that... Uh, uh, I'm sure people out there would really want to look into and talk to your city councilors about it. So thank you for watching and see you next time. And you can find your balls at Jerfie Hot on Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> Don't forget, you can find the man.